My name is John Maglore, and I'm a second year law student at the University of Pennsylvania. Today, we're delving into a thought-provoking legal case, Doe v. Hopkinton Public Schools, which was decided in 2021 by the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. This moot court centers on the suspension of two high school students, Doe and Bloggs, from Hopkinton High School. The pivotal question is whether Hopkinton Public Schools' suspension of Doe and Bloggs was unconstitutional in light of the students' First Amendment right to free speech. Let's begin by familiarizing ourselves with the facts of this moot court case. These facts are based on Doe versus Hopkinton, but have been slightly altered. The story begins with Roe, a former student of Hopkinton High School who filed bullying complaints with the school. In the complaint, he alleged that his hockey teammates took and distributed unauthorized photos and videos of him, which he alleged negatively impacted his well-being and ability to learn. Roe's complaint further alleged that Roe's teammates circulated derogatory messages about Roe. In response, the school promptly conducted an investigation, which revealed a Snapchat group where members of the hockey team, including Doe and Bloggs, participated in sharing negative messages about and disparaging photos of Roe. The school's chief investigators, assistant principals Hannah and Pominville, concluded that the actions of Doe and Bloggs violated the school's bullying policy and caused emotional harm to Roe. The school suspended members of the group from the hockey team and additionally suspended Doe and Bloggs from school for five days. Doe and Bloggs then brought a lawsuit against Hopkinton Public Schools at the United States District Court for the District of Massachusetts, where they alleged that the school had punished them for exercising their constitutionally guaranteed First Amendment right to free speech. The District Court entered a judgment for Hopkinton Public Schools, finding no violation of Doe and Bloggs' constitutional rights. Doe and Bloggs appealed, but the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit affirmed the District Court's ruling. Now that we have an overview of the facts, we can begin to dive into the law. And we'll start with Tinker v. Des Moines, where the Supreme Court held that students don't forfeit their First Amendment rights when they are on school grounds. The Supreme Court stated that schools cannot suppress student speech unless the speech materially and substantially interferes with the school's operation. This standard is quite a high bar for schools to overcome. However, Subsequent decisions have refined Tinker and provided some more clarity as to when schools can limit student speech. Some cases, like Bethel School District No. 403 v. Frazier, Hazelwood School District v. Kohlmeyer, and Morse v. Frederick, have helped to further shape the boundaries of student speech rights. Frazier emphasized the school's ability to discipline vulgar or offensive speech. Kohlmeyer supported a school's editorial control over student publications, and Morse clarified limits on student speech promoting legal activities. More recently, in Mahoney Area School District v. BL, the Supreme Court held that Tinker does not apply to student speech off campus. Such speech, however offensive, is protected unless school authorities can show that a student's off-campus speech would incite immediate violence. Now that you know the facts and a bit about the law, this is where you come in. Imagine that the United States Supreme Court has granted certiorari on Doe versus Hopkinton Public Schools. This means that the Supreme Court has agreed to hear an appeal of the First Circuit's decision. You will take on one of three roles, a Supreme Court justice, a lawyer for Doe and Bloggs, or a lawyer for Hopkinton Public Schools. If you are a lawyer for Doe and Bloggs, your role is to persuade the Supreme Court that the First Circuit's judgment was incorrect. And if you're a lawyer for Hopkinton Public Schools, your job is to explain to the Supreme Court why the First Circuit got its decision right. It'll be up to the justices to decide whether Doe and Bloggs or Hopkinton Public Schools has the better legal argument. I hope this video was helpful in getting you acquainted with the moot court. Best of luck in making your arguments or deciding the cases, and I hope you enjoy the moot court activity.